welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to show you guys how to make a finnick fox. It's been ages since I've made a fox creature and I thought it was about time. Plus, I've never done a finnick fox before and I thought those ears would be really fun to make. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, to start on our finnick fox, we're going to start on the sewing first. So what I did was I drew a very simple pattern out for our fox. I want my fox to be in a sitting position, so I drew the pattern out in a certain way to help the body sit up. So right now it kind of looks like a squirrel, but it'll look more like a fox once you have long hair on it. So the pieces that you'll want to cut out are a left and right body piece, a belly piece, and then the inside parts of the legs. And then you want two pieces for the tail. I'm going to start by sewing the tail first, so I'm going to sandwich the two pieces for the tail together and just sew all the way around it. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to flip it right side out and stuff it lightly. Now I'm going to take the body pieces and the inside parts of the legs, I'm going to lay them out and I'm going to sew along the very tops of all of the legs. I'm going to leave the backs of the legs open to make it easier for when we add the clay feet to the body. After that I'm going to take our belly piece and I'm going to sew a body piece on each side of it. After all the sewing your body should look something like this. Okay, now we're going to move on to the clay pieces. Now normally when I make ears, I like to make them out of fabric, but today I'm going to actually make the ears for a finnick fox out of clay. So I'm going to roll out a large sheet of it. I have a very simple pattern that I drew out to make the shape of the ears. I'm going to trace that, and then I'm going to put these onto a glass container to give them a rough shape of an ear. I don't want them to be completely flat, I want them to have a bit of a curve. Next, I'm going to make the paw pads for our fox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out four balls of clay and I'm going to flatten them onto a nice surface to work with. This is going to be the base that we're going to build up the toe pads on. Next, I'm going to roll out a bunch of little balls to use as the toe pads. So I'm going to push these into the clay and position them where I want them and then I'm going to use my tools to refine the shape. After that, I'm going to put these and my ears in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 25 minutes. Once those are done baking, we can start on the face and the feet. Now to make the face, I'm going to use a large lump of tin foil that I shaped into a rough idea of what I want the snout to be. I'm going to put this on the top of my glass container and I'm going to start covering it in clay. Now the hardest part about this face was because I made the ears so large, I had to keep reminding myself to make the face very small. Even though the ears are extremely large, you want to make sure your face stays small and petite because a finnick fox is usually a very small fox with very oversized ears. So you don't want to make the mistake of making the head too large. It may at first look a little bit smaller than it should be, but just keep working with it. You can always add more clay to it. Once I like the shape of the face, I'm going to add the ears to it. So I'm going to push them into the clay and I'm going to use some strips of clay to help hold them in place. Now normally I wait until the very end to add some fur detail to it, but I figured it might be easier to get the fur detail on the inside of the ears done before I moved forward. So I'm just going to use one of my tools that has a decent point to it, and I'm just going to use it to make some line work in the clay. Now for the eyes, I'm going to use these little glass balls that are flat on one side. I'm going to push them into the clay where I want them, and I'm going to shape the clay around them to make the eyelids. These I'm going to actually be painting over, so it doesn't matter what color you're using unless you want to use glass eyes instead. After I was happy with the look of the eyes, I'm going to move on to finishing the nose and the mouth. To do this, I added one ball of clay at the very tip of the nose, and I blended it in to make the shape of the nose. For the mouth, I took two larger balls of clay, and I pushed them onto each side of the snout, and then I blended everything together. I'm then going to use my tools to shape the nostrils and the rest of the nose, along with the mouth. Now I just need to add a fur texture to the rest of the face and then we can bake it in the oven. Oh. 
So the face is going to go in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 55 minutes. Okay, moving on to making the feet, I'm going to take those paw pads that we started with and we're going to glue them to some wires, that way we have a base to work with for our foot. Now to make my feet, I'm going to put a large strip of clay at the very bottom of the wire and I'm going to blend it into the paw pad. I'm going to be sculpting the very bottom of the foot first, so I'm going to put all the fur detail and everything in, and then I'm going to bake this for probably about 20-25 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. After it's cooled, I'm going to finish sculpting the very tops of the feet. So I'm going to do the same thing to the top of the leg, and then I'm going to add balls of clay on the tops of the toes, that way I can shape the foot properly. I'm going to blend everything in and add a fur texture to it. Now if you want when you're making your feet, you can actually add claws to this. I just didn't want to, I wanted to make it look super cute and I figured adding little sharp claws to it might change the look of it. Okay, so once I have all four feet finished and I'm happy with them, I'm going to put these in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 minutes. After the feet and the face are all done baking, we can move on to painting them. To start on the painting, I'm going to primer everything with a color that is very similar to the color of the fur. This one is a little bit brighter than normal, but I'm going to lighten it as we go. So I'm going to primer the face and all four feet. After all of that's dried, I'm going to start adding some color to the face. So I'm going to add some more peachy colors, almost skin tone colors to the inside parts of the ears, and then I'm going to add some highlights to the face to make it look a little bit brighter and to change the tone of the color. Now to start on the painting for the eyes, I'm going to add a nice brown color to them and then while that's drying, I'm going to paint the nose black. I'm then going to go over the eye with the same black to make the pupil. After that, I'm just going to add some highlights to the eyes and then I'm going to fix up the eyelids and then we are done with the face and we can move on to painting the feet. Now for painting the feet, the same brown that I used to make some markings on the face, I'm going to use to paint the bottoms of all the feet. So I'm going to go over that and I'm going to blend it in. I'm then going to use lighter colors to paint the sides of the feet. And then for the tops of the feet, I'm just going to brighten them up a bit. Lastly, I'm going to add a little bit of white highlights here and there, and then I'm going to paint the toe pads black. After all of my painting is dried, I'm going to apply a layer of resin over everything to help protect the paint. I'm going to let this sit overnight and then we can start putting everything together. Okay, it's the following day, everything is dried and we can finally put it all together. So I'm going to take the body that we sewed already and I'm going to flip everything right side out. I'm then going to take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to glue all the legs in place. Now I'm not using the hot glue to glue the legs completely into place, I'm just using it to hold them into place, that way I can add a stronger glue around the seam. So I'm going to be using a glue called E6000. I'm just going to go all the way around the leg and I'm going to push the fabric into place and let that dry. And then while that's drying, I'm going to move on to adding a little bit of fur to the back of the ears. Now I'm going to take the tail of the fox and I'm going to sew it onto the body. After that I'm going to take our head and I'm going to attach it to the body. So I'm going to do the same thing with the legs, I'm going to add some hot glue and then finish it off with the E6000 glue. 
Now you'll notice that the fabric does not reach all the way around the head. That's okay. I usually don't account for this because I usually adjust it afterwards. So I'm going to measure how much of the head has not been covered and I'm going to make a triangle with the base of it that length. I'm then going to glue that triangle onto the back of the head and then after everything has completely dried we can stuff it and close it up. Okay guys, and that's how I made a Finnick Fox. I had so much fun making him. I'm gonna have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop, so make sure to check the links down below for that if you wanna buy one. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!